Last week, we took a look at the purchase order receiving and using the new mobile device. So this week, what I thought we'd do is go ahead and look at the uh, inbound side or the sales order picking side of, of things and the new uh, warehouse mobile device. Um, so what we're going to do today is we're going to, I'm going to go walk through the setup on the sales order picking. I, I did a video a while back on it. Actually, it's one of the first videos I ever did. Um, so I'll, I'll link it here if you want to take a look at that. But I'm, first thing I want to do is I'm going to run through the setup on everything. And then uh, what I'll do is we'll execute the work inside of the new mobile app that, that came out this year that Microsoft released this year. And so you can take a look at it. Now we'll add chapters to the video so you can click around if, if you don't, if you already know the setup part of it and just want to see the new warehouse management device piece of it. All right. Um, so let's go ahead and flip over to um, finance and operations here. Now, one thing I didn't show you last week, if I go into uh, feature management, there is a feature that you do want to turn on for this, for the new uh, warehouse management um, app. They do run, these two apps will run in parallel. You can run them at the same time. Um, they use the same menu setups, the same uh Login settings. I got some questions on that. You know, is the is the setup the same? Yeah, it's it's exactly the same. You connect to it, you know, either via a client certificate or a client secret. Uh, so those those pieces are exactly the same, and you can and you can run them both in parallel if you want to for right now. Um, so if there, is, but like I said, there is you, you do need to turn on a piece in feature management to get the icons to show up, and and that really is the only thing that I can tell that that the feature does it in feature management, it turns on the icons on the mobile device. Uh, otherwise I did, I was running it for a while without that and it just wasn't showing the icon. So th there may be other functionality there that, that it's needing. But um, if we flip over here from feature management here, let's go to all. And this is in uh, 10.0.17. Uh, so let's go ahead and filter. Let's just, or I've got the name uh, feature uh, contains, I think I tried app, maybe there was a uh, something let's filter on warehouse here as well just to make our job easier there we go it's this one right here that you want to turn on so it is the settings icons and uh, steps step titles for the new warehouse app turn that on the main thing that that i i notice is it, it gives the uh the icons here if you, you don't have that uh, turned on these just show up as blank so there's there's other things there as well it looks like that it does so um yeah, so just turn that on first. Let's go ahead and take a look at the actual setup here. So I'm gonna go back to the uh, finance and operations home. And so last week during the purchase order receiving, we looked at two setup things we had to do uh, or setup pieces we had to do. And this week we're adding one more thing, which is a wave. So if we go into the wave and take a look at the wave template, um, you do need a wave template and this controls orders that are grouped together. So for example, if you want all your um, next day airs grouped together, you can you can release those in a group. You know, it just groups orders together. So you basically, you need a basic setup on one of these. So, um, you know, we're automatically creating these waves and that happens when it releases. It's gonna process this when it releases the warehouse. So generally what, what these are the, the settings you wanna use. I won't go in depth here what all the wave settings are, but just, just know that the wave just groups those orders together and then releases those at all at one time, right? So you may set your wave up where every time you hit the release, it releases a new order out to the warehouse, or you may, you know, wait and run the automatic release to warehouse and, and it releases a bunch of orders at the same time. And you have options of automatically processing that wave, which it automatically processes and releases it to the warehouse, or you can manually process and release the wave if you're manually looking at that. All right, so the other thing we need to set up is if we go into work and work templates, um, just like on the purchase order side, we, we've got some sales order uh, work templates. So got to make sure your work order type is sales orders. And I'm going to go into work in uh, 24, warehouse 24 today. So the way this works is it, it'll look for the first match it comes to. So this, this sequence number is real important. So this 24 up here is, is going to be the first one it hits for warehouse 24. So this is the one it's going to use for me. Um, and it's just a simple pick and a put. And then you have a directive code here, which use, uh, specifies which location directive group you're going to use. Uh, so it's going to go to the bay door here. So we're just going to pick it up from the picking location and move it to the bay door. All right. 
So then the next piece of setup you have is the location directive. So if we go into the location directives here, um, again, we want to make sure our work order type is sales order. And again, this is going to execute in the, in the sequence order. So once it finds a match, it's going to stop there and it's not going to go down the rest of the list. So for warehouse 24 on the pick side, it's going to come to this first one here first and, and grab it. So let's walk through this location directive. It's a little more complicated than the one we saw last week. So we have the work order type is pick. And then on this one, you got two different lines. So this one specifies a unit. So this is saying from one to 99,999 pallets. So if I get a pallet, basically, it's going to pick it from bulk. So if we click on this action down here and it's fixed or non-fixed locations, it probably has a location profile of bulk. There we go. So it's only going to be looking at bulk locations for this particular one. Now, if we look at the next line down, uh, we're going to go, this is pretty much everything else besides pallets. It's going to look in the fixed location first. So it's going to do, look for fixed locations for the product. If I expand that out a little bit there, it's only going to look at fixed locations for the product. And then it will basically look for other, other locations, which uh, it says from floor. So if we go hit edit query here, location profile is floor. Okay. So basically what that means is it'll look for the fixed location first. And if it doesn't find anything there, then it's going to go and look in a, a floor location to, uh, to get the, the pick side. Now, also a little bit different from last week on the purchase and receiving one. Um, we only had a put side. So we did have a pick side on, on last week, but we, or didn't have a pick side, sorry, last week, but we did have a put. So on the sales order side, you've got two different puts here. So, right. So, You've got a put and then a put mixed. And generally when you set these up, the only difference is this multiple SKU uh, flag is checked. Like most of the time when I'm doing this and I set up my, I, my initial put, I'll just do a copy and call it something like this, 24SOPO, just put mixed in there. And then you can just flip that flag. Just an easy way to do that. So let's talk about this one. Uh, let's talk about the put one first. So the put is, and this one also specifies a bay door location. So again, if we remember on that work template, it had a, had a uh, uh, directive code on there, a bay door. So it's going to look for a location directive that has bay door there in the directive code. So basically what this one's going to do for all, all items here from 1 to 99,999, if we go into edit query, it's going to look for a bay door location. All right. Now, the mixed, so again, does exactly the same thing, looks exactly the same way, you know, bay door location here. But the only difference is, is this multiple skew flag is, is checked. So for whatever reason, I'm not exactly sure. I'm sure there's a technical reason why it's done this way. Um, it uses the, the normal put location directive if it's a, a single item going to the bay door. So if you've got a one, one line pick and a one line put, that's, that's the location directive it's going to use to go to the go to the bay door. But if you've got multiple lines, so if you're picking four or five different lines above and then all those are going to bay door, it's going to use that mixed location directive. Again, not sure exactly why there are the technical reason why it's done that way, but um, uh, it, it is. So I, it does come in handy from time to time to be able to steer those to different places. But for most of the time for the implement, implementations I've done, they are, they, they're just the same and it just have that checked um, there. Okay. So let's go ahead and look at the menu items we're going to be using today. So if we go back underneath uh, warehouse management uh, setup and then mobile device, if we go to the mobile device menu items here, the two options that are available that are set up right now for sales picking are, are sales picking and sales picking system. The sales picking system is the one we're going to be using today. But if we take a look at sales picking, um, this is set up for user directed. And basically what user directed means is when we release the order, the sales order, uh, when we release that to warehouse, it's going to generate work, going to generate a work ID, right? So user directed, the user has to specify the work ID. So a lot of times that's used if you're, for example, maybe printing work or, or, or you know, or you just have somebody, um, actually that's generally what I see is if you, if you're printing out the work for whatever reason, you might have the work ID in there and you have the person enter the work ID and uh, they're going to picking it. So, so it's when you want to specifically pick an exact work. The one we'll be using today is a system, uh, uh, sales picking a system directed. And what that means is the system is going to give you your next work ID. Um, so it's also going to generate a license plate. A license plate is required 
um, when, when we're putting things into the bay door location. So it's either it's going to generate one for us if it if it needs it there. Okay. And on the system directed, uh, you you have these queries that you can uh, make uh, here that says why, you know, in what order do you want to pick things uh, with. We're not going to go into that in too much detail today, but just know that uh, with a system directed, you can uh, tell it in what order you want to pick things. So you do have some some control there of what, when, and where things get picked. Okay. So let's go ahead and uh, get into the fun part here. So let's go into uh, sales and marketing and let's generate a sales order for us. So we're going to go to sa all sales orders. We'll do new, and let's use customer account US-004. And again, I'm going to use Warehouse 24 today, and we're going to say okay. All right, so item number, we'll do an A0001, and let's go ahead and do a quantity of five, and uh, let's add a new line, and we'll do A0002, and we'll do... Um, We'll do 100 there. All right. So when you're doing your sales order, you do have to create reservations in order for the item to release. If you don't have reservations on, on the line, it's not going to release the item. So let's go ahead and create some inventory reservations here. I've got manual reservations done, so I'm going to go up to my reservations. And I'm just going to do the reserve lot. And we'll close that one, and I'll start that line. And then we come to this line. We're going to go to inventory, reservation, and then we'll reserve lot. And then there we go. So we've got both of our lines reserved. And now the final step is, we're, I'm gonna manually release this. Know that you can set up batch jobs to release uh, uh, these sales orders, you know, so you don't actually have to manually release them. But I'm gonna manually release this one. I'm gonna release the warehouse. And this this is, particular system is set up to release in batch. So it's gonna, a batch job is going to run and uh, and release these orders for us here. Okay, so I'm going to pause it for just a second, and we'll we'll come back once that batch job runs. All right, so we're back. So that batch job has completed run. It just takes a few few seconds. Uh, mine's running pretty quickly. Um, so let's go and take a look at the work that gets generated here. So if we go underneath warehouse and we take a look at the work details, so it's going to tell us to pick up um, that A triple one from this location CP 1 and it's going to ask us to pick the A002 from location FL002. Okay, so let's hop on over to the mobile device and we'll go ahead and I've already logged in and we're going to go choose the outbound menu. And like I said, we have the sales picking option. So if I go into that one real quick, it's going to ask us for a, a work ID. Um, so again, this is if you know the work ID, this is the option you choose. But um, we're going to go ahead and we're going to use the system option. So if we go to pick and system, it's going to pull that one up. This is the 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 next um, work that's in the list. So it's just kind of going in order here. So this is going to be the next one it gets. So what it's telling us here is just pick CP001 from uh, location A001, five pieces. Here's the, the description on it. And notice it says scan a license plate. So it's asking us that because it is a license plate controlled location. So... If I come back over here, I've got my on-hand inventory. And so here's the inventory CP001. I've got license plates turned on. So this is what the, the ID it's looking for here. So this LPA, uh, I didn't mean to actually click on it, but we'll, it'll work. Uh, so we'll close that out. And just I just wanted to copy that license plate there. Notice there's 10 there. So if I go back in here, I'm gonna go ahead and paste the license plate ID in there. And and I will say the in the la, in the in the previous sales order video that sales uh, sales order picking video that I did I didn't use license plates and I'm, I'm kind of I didn't do a lot of license plate work in the beginning of the video so I'm I'm kind of showing you that process because it's it's not a bad process it's you know it just depends on what you need so generally when you are using license plates those license plates will get a fix when you're receiving. There's ways of printing those out. Um, I'll link the video there to the how you can set up a zebra printer uh, emulator to, to try that out if you want to try that out. But generally in the receiving process, you'd stick a license plate on it. So either way, I'll, I'll put the license plate in there, go ahead and hit enter. And uh, it's going to generate, I don't know if you remember on the on the menu setup, it's tell, it's a, asked me to auto-generate a license plate. And you do need a license plate to go into the bay door location. That, that's the license plate control location. So it's generating this number here for me. 
Um, so it's just telling me to pick this item. I'm going to say okay to that one. When I pull up the next item here, it's going to it's going to tell me to this. This is the generated license plate that it generated um, after I picked the first one here. So it's this is the license plate it's going to. So the next item is telling me to pick item FL002. Uh, item is A002 um, for 100 there. Okay. So what we want to do is go back to our on hand screen. I'm going to look in FL002. So here's a license plate that's got 500 on it. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to grab that copy of that one. And we'll go back to our mobile device, click in there, paste that one in there. Okay. And now, now it's going to tell me uh, to, that I need to put um, 105 items. So we had the five of the A001 and 100 of the A002. It's, that's why you've got 100 or 105 there. And it's multiple items um, into the bay door location. So we're just going to hit OK. And that's going to do the receiving. Now, I will say there, there's a lot of variations of this that you can do. You can configure different confirmations for item confirmations. You know, just like it was asking us for the license plate, we can ask for an item. Uh, we can ask for a location scan, et cetera, et cetera. That's all set up in the word confirmation. So you still, if you're used to using the old app, you still have all that, that feature avail availability there on the new app. Okay, so again, this was just a quick run through of the, of the new warehouse mobile app on the sales picking side. Uh, hope you liked the video if you found some value. And if you did, please like it. Uh, that just helps me on the distribution of these videos. It helps more people see them. And uh, on this series, I'm going to put out at least two more videos, I'm thinking, maybe three. Uh, so if you like this content want to keep seeing the, the new processes on the, on the new mobile app, uh, go ahead and subscribe and hit the notification bell. When I upload a new video, which is generally on Thursday mornings, um, you'll, you'll get notified when I upload that new video. Okay, so again, thanks for watching. Till next time, see you later. Bye.